episode 6 has come out and just like episode 5, it's another turd that just won't flush. This episode doesn't have key jangling member berries to distract the audience, and since it has nothing to bait in the simps who only like the show because Hayden Christensen made a pointless cameo in it, the problems it does have become that much more apparent. But before I get into the episodes, I just wanted to point out why exactly these problems exist. A big part of it is that Lucasfilm is a terrible company filled with talentless twats. But I think the bigger and much worse a problem is the shills that simp for Disney Star Wars, no matter what terrible abomination they shit out. Normally I would say that these people are sellouts, but that would imply that they had integrity in the first place for them to throw away for money. It's just you have no integrity. That's the worst thing I could say about anybody. It's this type of behaviour that actively encourages Disney to never make anything good ever again. Just like when Kenobi came out, they called it the greatest show ever made. Then a week after it finished, nobody ever talked about it again. Deep down, they all know that Disney Star Wars sucks ass and they are only doing this for money. You know, like a whore. They do this day to day, lying to themselves and the audience about how great these terrible shows are. You know what, they're even worse than Judas, because when he sold his soul for six pieces of silver, he at the very least had the moral decency to realise what he was doing was wrong, and then proceeded to hang himself. You're exaggerating. Only a little bit, that's the messed up thing. Episode 6 at the very least moves forward what little plot there is, albeit at a snail's pace. We finally get to see Thrawn, the ultimate big bad, the galactic threat, but when he makes his entrance he doesn't look like this, a man in his prime standing tall and proud. No, instead he looks like this, an old man with a receding hairline and a beer belly sticking out. He's clearly out of shape. Has Thrawn been stuck in this galaxy for so long eating nothing but fast food? Thrawn looks like a man who has been crushed by a divorce and now lives in a tiny one bedroom apartment above a bowling alley. It's not just his appearance that's the problem, but the fact that he leaves such little impression. This is his first appearance, now is the time to demonstrate why exactly he is such a threat. And what does he do? Well, fuck all. Instead, he has to ask the Night Mothers about what's going on and they are the ones who seem to be doing all the work. This is the dullest introduction to a major villain ever, as we see him do nothing in this entire 50 minute episode. Thrawn didn't even gather his own army, it's implied that all of the stormtroopers are undead creations of the Night Mother's magic. On the subtitles they are called Night Troopers. Sure, why not add necromancy to the list of bullshit powers these witches can do? Why don't they just turn invisible or use holocruxes if Star Wars now has a Harry Potter magic system that lets them do anything? Then there's Ahsoka who is in this episode for about 3 minutes and despite transforming into a supposed wise character, Ahsoka is no different to how she was before. Her shallow rebirth means fuck all. She hasn't grown as a character or overcame any flaws that she had. No, all she did was change clothes, that's it. Her change is purely cosmetic. Next up is Sabine who takes up the lion's share of screen time and continues to be a one dimensional character with no other motivation than find Ezra. Now for her to be this obsessed over him, the man must be hung like a tripod because she has betrayed all of her friends and potentially doomed the galaxy, so I hope it was worth it. Moving on to Balin, he is slightly improved upon as we finally get an idea as to what his motivations are. I mean, they chose to wait three quarters into the show before finally establishing why your villain does what he does, but I guess it's better late than ever. Shin Hattie still has no character and neither does Morgan Elsbeth, as we still don't understand what exactly their motivations are. Now let's break down what little plot there is. The episode begins with Ahsoka and Hu Yang inside that stupid fucking space whale as they ride it to where Thrawn is. Because of course, this completely random space whale knows the exact place they need to go. Fuck you, Anna! So as they wait to pass the time, Hu Yang tells Ahsoka a story that begins a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. This is the last time we see them and we cut to the hyperspace ring. They approach a planet that is called the Space Whale Graveyard, because when space whales are about to die they always come to this shithole for some reason. Is it ritualistic? Are the whales religious? Fuck if I know, they just seem to come here because reasons. Morgan then says that her people were the first to ride the space whales to other galaxies. 
If the space whales are now everywhere, and Morgan knows that you can use them to travel between galaxies, then why did she waste all of that time and effort building a hyperspace ring and looking for that bullshit MacGuffin, when she could have just gotten a giant fishing net and captured one of the whales? Because if she did that, she would never have been caught by Ahsoka. Anyway, they land on the planet and are greeted by three night mothers, because these super witches are fucking everywhere. They say that Thrawn will be arriving shortly, so they decide to lock up Sabine. The reason? It is dangerous. Wrong! That's wrong! Based on what? She's lost every fight she's been in. Anyway, Thrawn eventually shows up on a makeshift Star Destroyer. So Thrawn exits his ship, and during this entire episode, we never learn what he has been doing in this galaxy for years. Or even, what state is the galaxy in, and how exactly did he survive accelerating faster than the speed of light, with no protection at the end of Rebels. He also says that he has been trapped in this galaxy. Why didn't Thrawn just take his Star Destroyer out and go and lasso a few space whales? He could have tied them to his ship and used them to go home any time he wanted. The guy is supposed to be a genius, why can't he figure this out? This is the problem when you introduce stupid concepts like space whales. It creates many problems and pitfalls that Dave Filoni has no intention of answering. Anyway, since Thrawn is unable to find Ezra, even with the help of those bullshit witches that can see everything, he allows Sabine to go looking for him, with Balon and Hattie following nearby, with orders to eventually kill the pair of them. On the way, she is attacked by bandits, and she ends up being saved by her bullshit plot armor. Remember last episode when Ahsoka was easily able to stab through one of them? So why is it working this time? Well, that's because the plot said so. These bandits end up being completely useless. They just continue to keep aiming at her body, rather than targeting her unprotected head. This keeps happening until she kills nearly all of them. Sabine then starts screaming at her mount for not helping out with the fight. Is she mentally ill? She has only just met this animal a few minutes ago, and the bandits had guns. What exactly did she expect this wild animal to do? Jump in the way of the blaster fire? What a bitch! So she throws a temper tantrum and storms off like a child. We cut to Balin, who finally gives us his motivation. He's basically Daenerys Targaryen. He wants to stop the wheel, or in this case, the cycle of war. And he believes that in order to do so, he must have Thrawn wage war on the galaxy, which will somehow stop more war. What? How exactly do you end war by having more war? Is it the only way to fight hate? Is with more hate! So after this show has wasted even more of our time, we cut to Sabine, who eventually meets up with a bunch of crab people, who then take her to meet Ezra, and all they do is hug. Fuck her right in her pussy! Now Thrawn, the genius, was somehow unable to locate this village, despite having years to do so, a massive Star Destroyer, and the fact that they are sitting out in the open. All this shows us is how stupid and useless Thrawn is. It's not even been a full day and she is able to find Ezra just like that. And with that incredibly boring cliffhanger, the episode ends. That was awful. Now this episode had two major problems. First off is Thrawn, who is built up to be this super villain, and yet he does nothing this entire episode. It's the most lackluster intro you could do for a character. All he does is have a bunch of witches tell him everything. That's it. Now the real Thrawn is supposed to be insanely intelligent, but he was written by someone clever, whereas Dave Filoni is writing him now, and he is a fucking idiot. And as you all know, you can't write a character that is smarter than yourself, which is why he has included these bullshit power broken witches into the script, because if Dave Filoni is unable to think his way out of a problem, which is quite frequently, then he will use these magical bullshit deus ex witches to do it for him. This leads us to the second problem, which is Sabine. She is a complete non-entity, and all this show has established is that she is completely desperate for Ezra's fat wang. Why else would she doom the galaxy for him? And yet when they meet, all they do is hug nothing else. Sabine is absolutely devoid of personality and character, so it means nothing when these two have reunited. So that was episode 6 of Ahsoka. It's a piece of shit. Recognize 